Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping into my shack for another Ham Shack Chat. This time, I'm starting a new series about a much less expensive rig than all my others. The ICOM IC718 is a simple and very basic 100 watt HF radio. It is a three stage heterodyning rig and has very few modern features. Nevertheless, once you get past the lack of flash and fireworks of the more expensive rigs, this rig does what my other rigs do, but at a budget friendly cost. The meat of this video will go through the quick access settings and the set and forget initial settings. Future videos will discuss setting up for specific modes and I will give a deeper discussion of the settings that apply to those modes when I get to those videos. As always, any questions, suggestions, corrections, or just general remarks can and should be left in the comments section below. Questions? Comments? This is the ICOM America website and I'm using it for my convenience. You can also use the ICOM Japan website. We're going to go to products and amateur. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to base stations and scroll down to the IC718. Click on that. That opens up the ICOM 718 page. And by the way, I'll be putting links to all of these in the video description. Go to support and download. Scroll down. And the first thing we want to do is download the basic manual. You do get a paper copy of this. I like to have a searchable PDF version to get to a quicker reference if I need to. I'm going to click on basic manual. You have to come down here. You agree to the download terms and we're going to download it. This is their website version. To get a PDF version that you can store on your computer, you can click this download up here in the corner and this is going to go to my downloads folder and that is now saved. And I'm going to open up my folder and show you that it is in fact there. We're going to repeat this crime by going back to the manual download page and download the advanced manual. Same thing. Agree and download and save. Now I'm going to close all of these out and I'm going to open up my downloads folder and you see I have these two here. Now you can store these on your desktop or open a file on your desktop or whatever and just copy them across and you'll have them available for future reference. And we'll just close these out. The next thing we're going to want to do is go to our warranty page which is right here. I'll put this link in the video description and it's going to come up and to get the information that you need on the package that your rig came in you'll find a tag that looks very much like this. This one happens to be for the ID51A but it gives you the two bits of information that you're going to need. You want to put your first name, last name, a contact email, you know, pick your country, you're going to put your street address, your city, your state, and your zip. Scroll down here. You get the UPC code and your serial number. You can enter the date that you purchased it and the dealership. So once you get this whole thing filled out, you click on register and you can read right here what the warranty covers. I got you covered. I'm planning on doing a dozen or so videos about this rig, including how to change modes, frequencies, and operate some of the other functions. I'll also be doing setup and demo videos about how to do SSB, CW, and a variety of digital modes using this rig. I'll also discuss different accessories and software that will make these modes possible. Before we move on to the hidden in plain sight settings, if you've stuck around this long, please take a moment to kerchunk that thumbs up icon and give me a like. That makes me smile. First, we're going to take a look at our quick set mode items. And in order to get to this, we come over here, we press our set button, which is right there for one second. For the most part, while you're operating, these are things that you want to have for a quick change or a quick adjustment without having to dig down too deep. We start off with 
RF power and the RF power is obviously your power going out. The default on RF power is high or 100%. To change this, we turn our main dial and this is a percentage over here. The minimum power down here is low. In single sideband, high power is 100 watt. So that's where we'll leave it. Now we're going to press our up button, which is right here on the bottom. And that's going to take us to the next item in our list, which is mic gain. Mic gain, the default is 50. I have mine turned down to 40. And when we get to SSB and do a deep dive, I'll discuss why you set your mic gain at different levels and how to adjust that. I'm going to press our up button again to get to the next item on the list, which is your Vox gain. I generally don't use Vox, but you can. This is voice operation, where instead of pushing the button on the microphone, you just talk into the microphone. But again, when we're in the SSB mode and I talk about this, I will talk about about how to adjust all of that. Vox delay is another Vox setup and anti-Vox is a third Vox setup. Now we're going to press our up button again and we're going to move from voice mode into CW mode. You'll notice that I am still in the USB mode. That doesn't matter. You can adjust all of these in the background. CW pitch is your side tone, which is the tone that comes out of your speaker whenever you key your radio. Break in is currently off and that is the default, but you need to turn that on for your keyer to work. Break in delay is if you're using semi mode and the key speed. How fast do you want to send? The default is 20 words per minute. If you're just learning, you probably want to lower it. And again, you adjust this down. It'll go down to six words per minute and way up to 60 words per minute. We'll leave it right around the 20-ish mark. Press our up button again. We get our key ratio. This is the ratio between a dot and a dash. Now we're getting into the RIDI mode. RIDI tone sets your mark tone. Your options are 1275, 1615, and 2125 hertz. 2125 is kind of the standard. How far you shift or how wide your RIDI signal is, the standard is 170 hertz. However, you do have options for going wider at 200, 425, and 850. The last setting we're going to go up is your dimmer. This is how bright this display is. So we're going to turn it down. That's a low and you can turn it all the way off. That is uh, a personal setting. So I like mine bright enough that it jumps out at me. Whatever you've set over here is going to stay. The minute you set it, that's what it's going to be. But to get out, you just momentarily push the set button. All set. All set. I hope you're finding some new and interesting information about how you can easily adjust your rig on the fly, as it were. As I noted, this is an introductory overview of the settings. Deep dives into them will happen when I do the videos on specific modes. If you're a new ham looking to get into HF without breaking the bank, or if you know of someone who might benefit from this information, please share. <laughs> this video with them, especially on any social media sites you might frequent. This next group of settings are for the most part set and forget. In other words, you're not going to need to go in there and readjust them every time you change a mode or do anything like that. Because we have 25 of these and I don't want to drag this out too long, because we have 25 of these settings, I don't want to spend a lot of time on each one. Some of them are mode specific. When we get to the video on that mode, we'll do more of a deep dive on those. But I want you to be familiar with what's in there and what the default setting is, if there's anything unusual about that mode. To get to our initial set mode, we start with the radio turned off. Now, I'm going to press and hold the set button and turn the radio back on. In the mode, you can tell if your mode switch, which is right here, is going to be active during a given mode. Up button brings us to our RF squelch. The default is RS, which means you're 
either showing your RF or your squelch level. And that's this knob here. So are you adjusting the RF? Or are you adjusting the squelch level? Beep is pretty self-explanatory. Do you want the rig to beep when you push a button? Or do you not want to? And the modes there are on or off. Beep level talks about how loud that beep is going to be. And band edge beep. CW tone level, I think, should have been in the first one. But this is how loud your side tone is going to be. P hold. On the S meter, as the signal's coming in, if you have this on, it will momentarily hold the highest level. That way you can see where people's voices or a CW signal is peaking. Scan speed is if you are either scanning the band or scanning through memories, then this is how fast it's going to do that. That is controlled through the function on button 8 over here. The default is high, I prefer low. Scan or zoom is when it sees activity on a channel, how long does it hold it? And I'm going to turn that off. I don't do AM on my rigs, but if I did and I wanted a noise blanker on there, this is where you would turn it on or off is the AM noise blanker. Auto TS is your auto tuning step function for the main dial. When you rapidly rotate the main dial, the tuning step automatically changes according to the rotation speed. So if you want to change quickly using the main dial, you'd want to turn that on. CW Paddle sets what kind of keyer you have plugged into your key in the back. The default is normal, and this assumes that it is a paddle key, something with two sides, a dash and a dot. You can also set it to reverse where right and left gives you a dash and a dot respectively. If you're using a straight key, you want to set it to off. UD allows you to use your microphone's up and down keys as a paddle. This rig does not have an internal tuner, so you have options on what type of external tuner you're using. The default here is none. Four is if you're using the AH4 control on the back. And 18 is if you're using the AT180 mobile antenna, which is a tunable antenna. I'll put mine back on four because that's what I'm using. AT tune, PTT tune, turned on, will automatically tune a new frequency when you tune to that new frequency. Speech language speech speed and the S meter speech are all off because they took that function out of the IC718. These are all only active if you have the specific function in your 718, which requires an accessory to be installed. Now the CIV, the, well, everybody calls it CIV. It's actually CI5, is your data baud rate for communicating with a computer. You set the baud rates here and your optional baud rates are 300, 1200, 4800, 9600, and 19200. I'm using 9600 baud. The CI5 address defaults to 5 echo. That's the hexadecimal value. However, you can set it anywhere from 01 to 7F. CI5 transceive turns the transceive function on or off. The option filter selects an optional IF filter if you want to use it. The expanded filter selection I'm going to turn on and this allows you to set per mode whether to use the wide or narrow filter. More on that when we actually get to those modes. But it also brings up these. All the information on the wide and the narrow per band settings is in the owner's manual. When we get to those modes, we'll discuss those. To get out of this, turn your rig off and turn it back on, and you're ready to play with it again. Let's play. And that's your 10,000 foot look at the quick and the initial settings of the IC718 HF rig. All of this info is in your owner's manual and you can either reference it there or come back to this video for a quick future review. Remember to use the chapters in the video description to quickly take you to the particular scene that you want to take another look at.
Thanks for taking time to watch this video. Please remember to comment, like, and share. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and I am out. There's just so many options.